In this video, we're going to be looking at compound events. Compound events are when two or more independent events happen together, and then we want to find the probability of that event actually happening. To better understand this, let's look at an example. Let's say I was given a quiz in Russian, but I don't speak Russian. The quiz had five true-false questions on it. What is the possible number of ways that it could be answered? Well, I could make a sample space. And by that I mean I could write out a list of all the possible combinations. And then when I do that, I find there are 32 possible combinations. I could also use the counting principle. There are five questions, and there are two choices for the first question, two choices for the second, two for the third, two for the fourth, and two for the fifth question. And I could write that as two to the fifth, or when we multiply that out, we get 32, just like before. When I write it as 2 to the 5th, I'm saying there are two choices for five questions. In this case, it doesn't matter which way we write the number, because the numbers are small. But sometimes it's easier to leave our answer in exponential notation. Let's say if we had 20 questions. Well, there are two choices for each of the 20 questions, so that would have been 2 to the 20th, which is 1,048,570. But what if there were 50 questions? That'd be 2 to the 50th, or 1 quadrillion, 125 trillion, 899 billion, 906 million, 842,624. That number is getting quite cumbersome. But lucky for me, this quiz only had five true-false questions, but it also had 20 multiple-choice questions. And there's no way I'm going to be listed out all of those options. So I'm going to use my counting principle. So you can see there are four choices for each question, and there are 20 questions. So that would be 4 to the 20th power. If we were to multiply that out, we get 1,099,511,627,776. So what would be the chance that I would get a perfect test? Well, the true-false section and the multiple-choice section are independent events, by which I mean the results from the true-false section does not affect what I do on the multiple-choice section. When there are two or more independent events that happen together, it's called a compound event. To find the probability of a compound event, we find the probability of each of the events separately, and then we multiply. Well, the chance of getting all the true-false questions correct is 1 over 2 to the 5th. And the chance of getting all the multiple-choice questions correct is 1 over 4 to the 20th. 4 to the 20th could also be written as 1 times 2 to the 40th. And I'm going to do that because when I want to multiply those together, if my bases are the same, I can simply add my exponents. So, the probability of guessing a perfect paper is 1 over 2 to the 5th times 1 over 2 to the 40th, or 1 over 2 to the 45th. So we have one chance in 35,184,372,088,832. I don't think guessing is going to help me in this situation. Let's look at another example. Using the spinner and the cards in the picture below, Toby spins the spinner, then picks a letter from the cards, and then spins the spinner again. What would be the probability that the spinner will land on an even number, then he'll pick a letter G, and then the spinner will land on 5? Why don't you pause the video and try the problem on your own? When you're done, unpause the video, and we'll go over it together. When I look at the spinner, I see that 3 out of the 8 sections have even numbers. So the chance of spinning an even number would be 3 out of 8. Then Toby's picking a card. Three of the cards have G's on them. I have a total of 9 cards. So the chances of picking a G would be 3 out of the 9, which I'm going to simplify to 1 third. Going back to the spinner, I see there's only one 5 on it. So the probability of picking a 5 is 1 out of 8. So to find the probability of all three events happening, I'm going to be multiplying those together I get 3 eighths times 1 third times 1 eighth. Simplifying my answer, I get 1 in 64 chance that those three events will occur. So a compound event can be as simple as finding the probability of flipping a coin two times and both times having it show up heads. Or it can be complex to include many different events. 
The key thing to remember is that a compound event is when two or more independent events happen together. And to find the probability of a compound event, one finds the probability of each event and then multiplies them together.